We saved $1,200 over the course of one year to go on an anniversary trip for our 10th wedding anniversary. And today I'm gonna to go over the amount of money we had, the amount of money we spent, and where we spent it. Spoiler alert, we came in under budget. Yeah. So for the last year, we saved $100 a month and, and come anniversary time, we had $1,200 to spend. And we debated about whether we were gonna put it on debt or we were gonna go ahead and take some sort of anniversary trip. Not anything big and fancy, but just something to celebrate 10 years together. And conveniently, our 10 year wedding anniversary fell right at the point that we had hit the halfway mark. So it was not only a 10th anniversary, but like a halfway celebration. Mauricio said he wanted to do something mountainy. He didn't know what it was, but maybe camping or something like that. We went with the glamping concept. We found this place at Savage River, Maryland called Savage River Lodge, and it had really good ratings. And the hot tub just turned on. It's been four minutes and the hot tub's still on. I've eaten my breakfast, lunch, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna go turn it off. On the other side of the camera is an eight person hot tub and that thing is loud. I don't even remember where it was. So we started looking around for places to go and we came across this place called Savage River Lodge and they had yurts. And if you don't know what a yurt is, it's basically like a round tent that's on a platform and they are super cool. and. This place was no different. It looked nice, fancy, pretty. Most importantly, it had air conditioning. <laughs> because if you know anything about Virginia, it's like living in somebody's armpit. It's hot, it's wet, and yeah, it's just bleh. So air conditioning was a must because well, I went like regular camping as a kid, I've become pretty snobby in my old age and I don't wanna sweat on vacation the whole time. Some is fine, but not the whole time. So at the NMA, I made reservations for two nights and they required a one night deposit. They charged us for one night and then we would pay for one night at the end. So the first night was $270. And I gotta tell you, I was like, $270 for a tent? Are you kidding? But hey, Mauricio really wanted to do it. And I, I guess it's just like summertime pricing. I don't know. On July 1st, we left on our trip. Now you'll see these dates are different on, the, on my overlays. And the reason for that is because these are the dates that the transaction processed through my through our Capital One 360 account. Because the way I handled this was I took all $1,200 and put it in the Capital One 360 checking account. And then we only used that card on our trip. And I had some cash in my wallet that from the previous month's blow money that we used here and there as well. There's the next charge happened as we were leaving we decided to stop for lunch we left around 11 o'clock on sunday morning and we decided to go out for lunch and where did we go sonic yes we went to sonic because there are no sonics within an hour drive of where we live and sonic is quite possibly mauricio's favorite restaurant ever not even kidding so before we even started our vacation, on the way, we spent $17.15 at Sonic. I got a cheeseburger, Mauricio got a hot dog, and there were Route 44 drinks involved, which FYI, if you have a distance to drive, Route 44 drinks, not a good idea. After we stopped at Sonic, we stopped at a gas station and I bought some bug spray. I had intended to buy bug spray and sunscreen, realizing I had left them at home. And this skin gets bright red in the sun. Like I literally burst into flame. I could not survive the trip without sunscreen. So I went in while Mauricio was filling up with gas, which by the way, the gas actually went into our regular budget. 
So while Mauricio was filling up, I went in to get some bug spray and some sunscreen and they had no sunscreen. So I just bought bug spray. So about two hours later, we arrived there. The whole trip took us about three hours to drive there and we had a great time. It was beautiful. We listened to loud music. We laughed. We talked about the last 10 years of marriage and it was just a very pleasant drive up. We got there, we got to our yurt. We were both kind of looking forward to just relaxing for a little while. It was clean and pretty and huge. It had its own bathroom. It had a little eating area. It had sofa and chairs, you know, a little deck and a patio. It was just so adorable. And, you know, running water, that was my primary concern is, are they gonna have running water? And they did, and we didn't have to go to a bathhouse or anything like that. Then we walked in the door and it was like we had walked into the gates of hell. <laughs> it was no joke, 110 degrees in the yurt. And I know this because there was a little register on the thermostat for the air conditioning and it said 110. So there was not gonna be any relaxing in the yurt. Apparently they didn't turn on the air conditioner for you. You have to turn it on yourself. So we put our stuff down. We briefly discussed how we were going to die of heat stroke if we stayed in this yurt. And we turned on the air conditioning and decided to go out and explore in town. There was a town about 25 minutes away and there were, they had a, like a little, kind of like a newsletter of different things you could do that was sitting on the table when you checked in. So we headed into town and we went to a little artesania market. We went through the market, didn't buy anything, just looked, felt kind of guilty for not buying anything because it was this little, little tiny town. And I imagine that she doesn't get a lot of traffic through her shop, but we didn't buy anything because we really didn't need anything and I didn't want to spend our budgeted money on tchotchkes. And right next door, owned oddly enough by the Savage River Lodge place was a restaurant called Cornucopio Cafe. We had dinner reservations at the lodge at six and it was like 3.30 or four by this point. So we had some time to kill, but we didn't want to eat anything. So I had a flight of wines, different wines, and Mauricio had a beer, I think. And we just sat and talked and, and you know, laughed at the oddity of our lives, I guess. And that cost $17.54. Then as we walked out, we decided to get some ice cream from the local ice cream shop, which was this little tiny, tiny shack that had um, like maybe eight different kinds of ice cream. So we got some ice cream and that was $7. I used leftover blow money for that. Then we had dinner at the lodge and oh my goodness, the food there was amazing. That is one of the things that was a selling point for us is this this lodge's restaurant, although it looks like a 1970s lodge, the food is was supposed to be phenomenal. So we ordered as appetizers a cheese plate and a sausage plate, and the sausages were made in-house, and the cheese was made at um, Fireflies Farm, and they make their own cheese there, and it was amazing then we got Mauricio got a soup and I got a salad it was this beautiful grape salad with walnuts and some sort of drizzle that was about the color of like caramel but so it wasn't dark enough to be like a balsamic but it had a blue cheese cream sauce and it was over a bed of spinach and I tell you what by the time we got to our main dish I was stuffed like so stuffed that I couldn't even take a bite of my dinner at my dinner was, I ordered uh, tofu with chili sauce. And while I'm not a vegetarian by any stretch of the imagination, I tend to gravitate towards vegetarian food. Mauricio had creme brulee for dessert. We ordered a bottle of wine. And that bill was $195.20. Ah, yeah, this was not a cheap place, but the food was amazing. Amazing. So after that, we went back to our yurt. It was still hot, just so you know. It was really hot. There wasn't any, any TVs or Wi-Fi or anything like that in the yurt. So we just went ahead and got in bed and it was like, 
I think it had cooled down to like 90 degrees and the sun was starting to set right around 930. And I would say by 11, it was down in the mid sixties in the tent. It just needed to cool off enough to, for the, the heat to dissipate. And then from that point on, it was really, really nice in the earth. You know, the bed had like this big comforter and I, I remember when we first got there, I looked at that comforter. I was like, ain't no way I'm going to be using that. But, but it was lovely. I mean, like genuinely lovely. So the next morning we woke up and we had breakfast delivered to the yurt. They bring a muffin basket with two large muffins for breakfast. And then we ordered a couple of little extras. Um, I ordered oatmeal and Mauricio ordered a bagel with lox. And then we both had mimosas to drink, which was fun because I don't normally drink in the morning. So then we were like, well, what are we going to do all day? And Mauricio said, well, we could go hiking. And so I was kind of like, okay, we'll do whatever. I remember looking at the map and seeing Ohio Pile. And I was like, oh, we are this close to Ohio Pile, Pennsylvania. And I've been whitewater rafting there. Mauricio, do you want to go whitewater rafting? And he was like, what's whitewater rafting? So we called to see if they had any trips for that day and how much it cost. And so we booked a trip for one o'clock that afternoon for $109 for the two of us. It would be about six hours. And so we were like, yeah. So we got in the car and drove up to Ohio Pile, which was about an hour away. On the way, we stopped as we crossed the border from Maryland into Pennsylvania. We stopped at the state sign because when Mauricio became a U.S. citizen, I made him a scrapbook, which I would show you if we had our stuff, but it's actually in the storage unit. But I made him a, a scrapbook that had 50 pages and each page was one state. And so every time we go to a new state, we put the pictures from that state on there. And one of our favorite things to do is take pictures with the, the sign like, welcome to Pennsylvania, welcome to Virginia, welcome wherever. And, and put that in there as kind of like proof that we were there. So he was like, I don't have any Pennsylvania pictures, so let's put those in there. So we went ahead and stopped on the side of the road, took pictures with the welcome to Pennsylvania sign, and then continued on up to Ohio Pile, which legit was maybe like another 20, 20 minutes down the road or whatever. So we get there, we get there about an hour and a half before we're supposed to leave. It's around 1130. We're hungry. We go and we head in to this little adorable little bakery that, and we ordered sandwiches and we both got these amazing brownies. They were so rich and wonderful. Mine was a brownie with pretzels and salted caramel. I only ate like this much of the brownie. It was like this big. I only ate about this much because it just was too rich, but it was really good. And I paid for that with cash. I don't remember. It was in the like $24, $25 range. It was worth every cent. It, the sandwiches were to die for. So then we went over and checked in and at the whitewater rafting, they actually had sunscreen and I was like, I got to have sunscreen for this. And that was $6.89. And then they sent us off to where we got all suited up. And they took one look at my glasses. Because as you know, I am now wearing my glasses pretty much all the time. And they took one look at my glasses. You know, it's pretty obvious. These are fancy glasses. And they were like, you're going to lose those. So we went ahead and bought one of those like straps that keep your glasses on your face. Mauricio bought one strap for his sunglasses. I bought them for my regular glasses and we headed off and went whitewater rafting and it was so much fun. The river was high, but it was starting to come down. So it was still, you know, class fours, rapids and, and it was fast and we were able to get out of the water. And if you ask Mauricio, there are some very funny stories about my ability to whitewater raft. I've done it several times in my life. I am not athletically inclined. I did almost fall out of the raft at one point when Mauricio sitting across from me grabbed my my vest and pulled me back in the boat so I did not fall off and of course 
we couldn't take our phones, so I wasn't able to record any videos, but the pictures you're seeing, I did purchase from the, the facility, and those were 5936 because they know you're not going to have your camera, so absolutely you're going to buy the pictures so they're going to charge whatever ridiculous amount they charge but we did buy pictures and we were very happy to have them we finished up around i don't know six o'clock ish and we were soaking wet and when i say soaking wet i mean like we had gotten in the river and swam around in our clothes wet we both had bathing suits on but you know under clothes well mauricio's was his shorts and mine was under my clothes but but my shoes were wet, my clothes were wet, and whatever. We knew that the place shut down super quickly. Everything around, it closed pretty much at dark because there's no street lights or anything. We had already canceled our dinner reservations at the lodge for that night because we didn't think we would make it back in time. So we were like, what are we gonna do? There wasn't a lot around and we weren't hungry right then, but we knew we would be in about an hour or two. So. We drove all the way back and went to the Cornuc Cornucopia Cafe. And we walked in and coincidentally, the guy feeding us was also the waiter from the night before and he recognized us. And we were like, do you have like a hidden corner outside because we are wet and disgusting, but we're hungry. And we explained to him we had gone whitewater rafting and because he had been our waiter the night before, he knew that we were up here for our uh, up there for our 10th wedding anniversary. And so, so he put us in like the farthest back corner of the patio outside. And we just sat and had some amazing food. We had this beautiful cheese plate. I have a thing for cheese plates, just so you know, if, if you ever come to a party at my house, there will be a cheese tray. There always is. So we got a cheese plate as an appetizer. And then we skipped the soup and salad because I didn't wasn't going to make that same mistake again. And I got a pasta primavera, so just pasta and vegetables with like a little light. It wasn't really a light sauce. It was kind of heavy sauce, but it was really good. And I told you, given the choice, I will always choose the vegetarian meal. And Mauricio got a chicken and waffle, but not like your traditional waffle and piece of fried chicken. It was like chicken gravy over the waffle and it was really good really really good but i'm glad i didn't order it because whoa that would have been heavy and then mauricio got this big flourless chocolate thing with salted caramel and ice cream on top for dessert i didn't get any dessert because i'm supposed to be a weight watcher i was not a weight watcher on this trip but I'm supposed to be a weight watcher. And that meal with the wine and the beer was $101.99. On the way home, we, I saw a little fruit store and I was like, I want to go in the fruit store. I just want to see what it looks like. And we went in and on the outside, it said, and Candyland on the window. So we go in. I kid you not, I have never seen so much candy in my life. There was candy everywhere. They had at least, at least a thousand different kinds of candy. And so we walked in and we were like, well, this is what we're getting from Alina. So we got her this big, huge bag of candy and, and she's going to be eating it until she's probably a teenager. But, you know, everything from chocolates to nerds to, you know, you name it, they had it. And we got some fudge for my parents and then some hot sweet and hot pickles there as well so we spent cash for that and honestly i don't even remotely remember how much because i grabbed the last of my money and mauricio had cash in his wallet and that's what we handed them we went home after that and and it was nice and cool i did discover that i am such a light sleeper that sleeping in a yurt isn't terribly relaxing for me because every time something walked around our yurt I heard it. So I woke up about a million times during the night to animals um, thinking they were people coming in to probably murder me or something. I don't know. You know, that deer, he's really frightening. So the next morning we got up, ate our breakfast in the yurt. It was the same as the day before because we just ordered the same breakfast for every day. And we checked out at noon, paid our bill, and that was the total final bill was... 369.23. So 270 for the second night in the yurt, and the rest of that was 
a couple of bottles of champagne, like mini bottles that we had and the breakfast. And of course, on the way home, we stopped at Sonic and that was $18 and it was awesome. It was a fantastic trip. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya.